Hey what's up guys, it's Kaylee, and today I'm doing my January wrap up. So in January I read a total of six books and DNF'd one book which amounted to 2,396 pages. One of those was a two star, three of those were four stars and two were five stars. I read four fantasy books, one thriller suspense type book and one action adventure book and the one that I DNF'd, unsurprisingly, was a contemporary. So first up I finished Misery by Stephen King. Finally, I started this in October and I finally finished it in January. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars and I really enjoyed this. This is about a writer who is kidnapped by his biggest fan and like Annie Wilkies is the original fangirl. She is completely insane. He gets into a car accident and she finds him and she keeps him under the pretense that she's helping him heal but really she's just very very happy that her hero is sleeping in a bed in her house. It's an amazing commentary on celebrity culture and how crazy we are about people that we don't even know just because of the work that they produce. Apart from the fact that she's completely batshit crazy, Annie Wilkies is a very relatable character, scarily so in some moments. It's a really really great read. It's not my favourite King, that definitely goes to The Shining, but of the four I've read, this is probably number two. Then I read The Haven by Simon Lelich, which is an Oliver Twist retelling. I gave this two and a half out of five stars. It was fine, as you can tell by my review. I didn't love it. I enjoyed the story. I found that the writing in some places wasn't the best, and the pacing was just a little bit off sometimes for me. But overall, it's a really fun middle grade. It definitely brings to mind books like Cherub and the Alex Ryder series. So if you were into any of those, then I would recommend that you pick this up. This actually, I don't think is out yet. I think it's coming out this month. And then book two is coming out later this year. It was nice to read something that had lots of action, but was still relatively mindless. This is about a boy called Ollie Turner, whose guardian Nancy is murdered. He wants to find the people responsible and kind of avenge her. When he, she is murdered, he is captured as well. And he manages to break free with the help of a character called Dodge, who takes him back to this, it, through a network of sewer tunnels, takes him back to this building that is full of, ch full of kids who are living by themselves, teaching themselves, supporting themselves, and it's this place called The Haven, which is, as the name would imply, a haven for children on the street who have nowhere else to go, who have no families, or have really bad family situations, or have been involved in gangs. It's a place where they can go, they have a safe space to live, they'll get fed, they can learn, they can teach each other. It's a really amazing community. And together with some of the kids at the Haven, Ollie starts to investigate Nancy's death, as well as a few other mysteries that come up. Then I read the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo. So I read Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. I gave Shadow and Bone four and a half out of five stars, and I gave the other two five out of five stars. I cannot believe it took me so long to read these books. I am a newly converted Lee Bardugo fan. I already knew that she was a queen, but like, I didn't know how good her writing was until I read this, and I was just completely wowed. Like, oh, her writing was beautiful, the world building was amazing, the characters are great. I just really, really love this series with all of my heart. It means so much to me now, and I can't wait to carry on with Six of Crows. The trilogy is set in a fictionalized, fantastical version of Russia, where there are these people called Grisha who have different sorts of magic that are referred to as the small sciences. So it's magic, but almost with a scientific basis, like they can't conjure things out of nowhere. The things have to exist. I'm explaining it really badly, but like, for example, our main character, Alina, is a sun summoner, so she can summon light, but there has to be light somewhere that she can source and then summon to herself. She can't just conjure light out of nothing. The same goes for people that have control over fire or people that have control over water. The people that control fire have to carry a flint with them and create a spark that they can then grow and control, or the people that control water have to find a water source somewhere, even if it's just the humidity in the air, and mould and create that and shape that to form water. So I loved the magic system, I thought it was really interesting, it's one of the more interesting ones that I've encountered in a while. And basically the story of the first book is that the main character, Alina, is in the Ravka army, 
and she has to travel through the fold which is this area of Revka that has turned to complete dark darkness it's incredibly unsafe to travel through because there are monsters lurking everywhere it's just it's not a good time no one wants to travel through the fold but in her role as part of the army she has to and they discover on their journey through the fold that she has what seems to be Grisha powers so she goes back with the Grisha to the little palace where all of them live and she learns to control her powers and to she learns more about what it means to be a Grisha and a whole lot of stuff happens it's really it's a really difficult series to explain without giving tons of spoilers but it is really really good I highly highly recommend it I can't believe it took me so long to read and I'm so happy that I finally did then my my DNF for the month I feel like people are gonna hate me for this but I didn't finish The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo I just I didn't love it I feel like everyone on booktube loves this book and I just didn't and I don't know why the characters were fine I can't even remember the main character's name but she was like a fine character to read and Evelyn Hugo I have to say was an amazing character I just didn't care what happened to them and it's like the writing wasn't even bad the writing was fine as well I just I got 102 pages into the book or yeah I got 102 pages into the book and I was like I actually don't care I don't care what happens I don't care to see what goes on with the series I just I don't care so I, I, I DNF that one thing that I definitely have to say in its favor is one of the things that I kept hearing about this book was that Evelyn Hugo seems so realistic and is such an amazing character and I do agree with that I think that far too often in books we're told that characters are so charming and enigmatic and the author spends a lot of time telling us how great the character is instead of showing us how great the character is and Evelyn Hugo didn't have that problem she completely leapt off the page she seemed very real she was charming she was charismatic even though she sometimes said the most awful things I was thoroughly enthralled by her but just not enough to care what happened in the rest of her life and the last book I read in January technically I finished in February but I finished it on the 2nd of February so like I'm just gonna count it in here because I I read like 500 pages in January it was a discovery of witches by Deborah Harkness if you're following me on Instagram you know how much I love this book already I have posted about it I think three or four times in the last month this is about a woman called Diana Bishop who is an alchemist well no she's not an alchemist she studies alchemy and history um, she's a historian one day she unlocks this alchemical manuscript that's been lost for centuries and I probably should have mentioned Diana Bishop also comes from a long line of witches because in this world witches vampires and demons are pretty common they also don't interact with each other so she unlocks this alchemical manuscript and suddenly everyone's eyes are on her everyone wants to get their hands on this manuscript for different reasons everyone has a different theory about the information it contains but they all know that they need it and that it's extremely important to the survival of creatures now Diana who for most of her life has shunned witchcraft is embroiled in this extremely tense drama between all these different groups of creatures and in addition to that she finds herself falling in love with a vampire which is not not the best idea when you're a witch in this world this was one of the books that I mentioned in my anticipated five star reads of 2019 I didn't end up giving it five stars I gave it four and a half stars yeah I gave it four and a half stars I loved the writing I loved the characterization there were just moments where I was a little bit like hmm there were moments that I thought dragged a little bit and all around it just wasn't quite a five star read for me but I did really love it I can't wait to carry on with the rest of the series I love the romance between Diana and Matthew so if you were of the like Twilight generation and you spent loads of time reading teen paranormal romance and you still kind of find yourself longing for that but you don't want to go back there because those books were really bad I would highly recommend this this so had the feeling of like a teen paranormal romance but aimed at adults it just so completely follows that formula of girl meets supernatural creature and they fall madly hopelessly ridiculously in love in like three weeks and would die for each other and their love is also forbidden because they come from different worlds and it's all angst and drama but 
romance and being drawn to each other and it's completely ridiculous but you cannot stop reading it is so addictive and I also really like the writing I thought the writing in some points was at some points was spectacular that was another reason that I did take Carfa Star off because towards the end their relationship did start getting did have moments that were a little too cheesy even for me even for me but for the most part the writing was just lovely and spectacular there's so many beautiful descriptions of wine especially Deborah Harkness apparently is quite a wine connoisseur so there are lots of descriptions really really intricate detailed descriptions of wine which are great I really enjoyed those and just generally I found the writing very atmospheric and very lyrical and lovely and I highly highly recommend this book I really really enjoyed it so those are all the books that I read in January I would love to hear your thoughts on them in the comments I might do like a series review on the Grisha trilogy or just like my thoughts on the Grisha trilogy but I want to make that spoilery so I don't want to include that in here because obviously wrap-ups are supposed to be a safe space let me know in the comments what you thought of any of the books that I mentioned or if you have reviews on any of them I'd love to hear what you thought also leave me links to your January wrap-ups so I can see what you guys read thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you all again very soon bye my life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep, and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know.